This right here is an early 1920s Willys Knight power plant engine. This engine's very unusual as it is a four stroke single cylinder engine, but it has no valves, no rocker arms, and no push rods. Instead, you've got three connecting rods, three cylinder sleeves, and two ports on the cylinder. In today's video, we're gonna see if we can get it running and explain how it works to you guys. I hope you enjoy and let's get started. I've been wanting one of these engines for a few years now and I finally picked this one up for a pretty good deal at a swap meet last year and I've always wanted to get into one of these and just kind of look at the internals as they're such a unique design engine. This engine's in pretty nice shape but it is a little rough so it will take a little bit of work to get it going. It's nothing I haven't dealt with before and we should be able to work right into it so I'm gonna break right into it and see how things go. If you have any questions about anything I did in this video please leave a comment down below. All the comments help towards making this video more popular and helping the channel out and I greatly appreciate it and I'll try to respond to as many as I can. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the sketchiest things I've done on an engine I've worked on in a hot minute. But it's working really good, so I guess I'll take it. This tank looks surprisingly good from what I can tell. It didn't have a gas cap on it when I got it, so I was a little worried it'd be kind of gross and rotted out, but I think this'll hold fuel just fine. I brought you guys... I don't know if video caught that. This thing just settled. I'm gonna check my hookup quick. That wasn't scary at all. Anyway, as I was saying, so the bottom of the gas tank actually looks quite nice. I was kind of surprised by that. I was expecting it to be a little rotted out, but for some reason, somebody took the drain pipe out of it over here. Not sure why they did that, but I'm gonna have to go get a piece of eighth inch pipe to put in there. We'll have it off the ground so I can see if I'm gonna cross thread or not. This engine doesn't have the original fill cap on it, but it does have a piece of like paper plugged in it. So hopefully there's no mouse nest in this gas tank. Judging by the fact it ain't rotted out, I'm gonna have a pretty high hope that it doesn't. All right, put about a gallon of gas in it. So far, it doesn't look like there's any leaks. That's slick. All right, so now that we know that, I'm gonna sit this thing back on the cart and I'll take the head off and show you guys how this thing works. All right, got the head off. 
cylinder wasn't wanting to come off and the reason being is the head was the part that was binding. So once I got the head broke loose finally, the cylinder is very loose on the cylinders. This is the magic of a Willys Knight engine. No valves, and yet it can run as a four-stroke engine. Instead of valves, you have two cylinder sleeves with ports in them, and they go up and down with connecting rods to open ports on the block for intake and exhaust. It's, every time I see it, it's just such a neat concept. After I got done messing around with the sleeves and just kind of looking at it in awe, I did kind of notice that the engine was out of time. At some point somebody's had this engine apart and got the timing messed up. So I spent the better part of an hour getting the timing back to where I wanted it. And I will say I've never had the experience of timing one of these. It's kind of hard to tell where the slides are supposed to be at. Alright, so this thing has a full pressurized lubricating system, and it would have had an oil pressure gauge here, but as you can see, this gauge don't look very good. So what I'm going to do right now for today, because I don't have an extra oil pressure gauge floating around, I'm going to just put a petcock here, and once I have the thing running, I'm going to open it, and if any oil comes out, that means there's enough oil pressure to lubricate everything. This right here is the weird little exhaust flange they have for the engine. It just makes it go from a flange to what I assume. This is just a regular pipe union. It came with just this nut, and I think that's just a regular pipe union. But I don't have any pipe unions laying around, so I just made this little guy right here. This is just a inch and a quarter pipe with a flange on the back of it that the flange nut will actually attach to. And that allows me to at least have some kind of exhaust on this thing. Considering how those valves work, I don't want to be letting cold air hit them. I don't want to know if those will crack under stress because of the cold air. I'd rather not find that problem out now. All right, I want to take this cover off and make sure there's no mouse nests in any of this, as well as take the brushes off the commutator so I don't worry about ruining anything on this thing if we get it going. There's only one screw left in this whole cover. Oh, we got pets. I'm going to make sure all these brushes are pulled off of this commutator so I don't have to worry about this generator frying anything, and then I'm going to see if we can get this thing going. A little bit of a cheat, but... I'm hoping this works the same way as a normal fork stroke does. I won't know for sure till I try, but I'm hoping once I get it running, it'll gain compression with a little bit of heat and some working. So we're gonna cheat this first time and use a little electric assistance and see how things go that way. What we really need is it has such little compression with those sleeves and everything, we really need to get some compression built up. 
So some speed will help with that. It has just occurred to me that I have made a fatal error in how I've done this in the fact these little side covers as I'm running this thing right now are also connected to the cooling ducts of the engine. So with these side covers off almost all of the vacuum through that flywheel is getting sucked through these side ports. I guess I never really described that. On these in Delcos and a lot of these light plants, the way they cool is that flywheel doesn't blow air into the cylinder, it sucks air out of the cylinder. So if you stand by one of these, that, that flywheel's blowing air outward. So I better get those covered up, because this thing's finally running right, and I just kind of realized, like, it seemed like it was getting awful hot, and I think I just figured out why. After getting that figured out, I decided this thing really could use a bath, so I started working on cleaning it up to get it more presentable. With this engine, I decided to go with the route of spraying it down with WD-40, letting it soak into the hard grease, and then rubbing it off with a rag. I like cleaning up these original paint engines as it gives them a nice cool look as well as preserves the history of the color and everything that's on them. And once in a while you'll find unique things like this original fuel decal on the gas tank. On a couple of the sheet metal parts though, like the generator cover and the side covers, I took them over to the wire wheel and gave them a quick buff to make them a little shinier to kind of add a little bit of a trim to the engine. I wasn't really happy with this petcock, so I ended up whipping up this cute little pressure gauge, more or less. It's just a little piston plunger and a little capsule to show when the pressure is up. It'll pop out, and when the pressure's gone, it'll fall in. After all that done and out of the way and the engine looking a lot nicer, I spent a couple of hours getting the engine tuned up and running a lot better, and here's the final result. the exhaust with a rag here for a second so you can hear just how quiet this thing is mechanically since there's no valves clicking or clattering. That's just amazing. This is an epilepsy warning as the next clip is directly of the combustion chamber through the exhaust and contains extreme flashing lights. This shot doesn't really look that good, but it is a really cool thing that you can't see on most other engines. In this clip right here, you can see the combustion chamber and the explosion of the combustion as these ports all have direct view of it. So as you can see there on the top, that little light part, that is the actual head of the engine. And once in a while you'll catch the top of the piston just barely, and also the bright explosion of the combustion. It's a very cool shot, and that's where I'm going to end it today, and I hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one.